Hey guys, what's up? By Sectatron here from One Hive Gazette, here with the next video, and this is a base identification video. So we are taking a look at a few bases and talking about how they're set up, breaking them down, and talking about why the attacker used what they did, and getting into some technical things um, in terms of how to identify a base and how to find the appropriate attack for it. Regretfully, I only have uh, one 10v10. I wish I had more. I'm going to show a 10v11, uh, one 10v10, and then three 9v9s. Um, just because I've been a little bit light on Town Hall 9s on the channel recently, so I want to make sure they get the uh, the love they still deserve. Um, I am pre-recording this. I will be at State Tennis, so wish me luck for that. Um, and this will be uploaded while I'm already there um, from my hotel room, most likely. So. Uh, wish me luck in the comments if you care, and uh, let's get into it. Starting with a self-serving attack on number three. By the way, you guys should subscribe to this guy. He has a YouTube channel, I think. Um, I forget its name. Just Google Bisectatron. You might find it. Um, taking a look at this attack here, had to identify... Let me pause it real quick. almost forgot to pause it. Um, had to identify the best way to the town hall. There's bases that are difficult to get the town hall and that are difficult to get 50%. This is one that's difficult to get the town hall. If you get the town hall, the 50% most likely was getting there. So you don't have to worry about percentage as much. Granted, still look for buildings on the outside to snipe if you can. That's always a good thing to do at the beginning of the attack so the eagle doesn't light up your troops at the end. That would, that would suck, especially if you're not going to get it with your push, which I won't. Town Hall is most accessible from this side. You can't ignore that. So um, even if there's a few more traps, it's worth coming from that side. The question is how to get there. Um, bowlers and Valks. Um, Valks definitely are a little bit more difficult because they... Um, they have to be in the same compartment. They don't have range. They can get really weird in their pathing. But at the same time, they require less spells. And taking a look at how this base is set up, the spells have to be invested in the funneling. So because I can only invest a few spells in my actual troops that can get the town hall taken out, it's more advantageous to use Valks because they require less spells. They're better for a dive. So right away, I identified because this base has a weird design with all these gaps to try to mess up your troop pathing, the main thing I was gonna have to do was create a funnel. So I start off with a queen walk. That's a good way to create a funnel on one side. Find a good place to queen walk, you'll get both percentage and the funnel taken care of. The thing that really um, I liked about this queen walk I'm about to do is because I'm sending my Valks up right in this area, straight at the town hall, I wanna funnel out these two key buildings because um, they're the main threat of forcing the Valks to walk. And on the other side, try to at least get that taken out so uh, the Valks go from these three touching buildings, which they'll be attracted to, take the jump to the Wizard Tower, then to the Town Hall. So for, there's different ways you're going to identify different bases, but for one like this, you got to think, um, first of all, this is a difficult Town Hall base, not a difficult percentage base. So the, the main effort is getting the Town Hall. How do you get the Town Hall? Look at the compartments, um, because it's going to invest so much in funneling, you're better off doing a Valk dive rather than a bowler push. The bowler push is more when you can predict the pathing and when it's just kind of among a bunch of buildings they are going to take up a lot of space and be really concentrated. This one's a little bit more spread out as Town Hall 11 bases go. Um, that's why I used Valks um, because the bowlers didn't have the spells for them and this wasn't the right base. So I have the, the liberty to use that rage up top with a golem. Uh, there's the funnel on the other side. The golem boulder combo is a good funnel, especially if you can rage up those boulders. That's such good value, rage to boulders for a funnel. Um, I recommend it. Then there's the jump, and just need the jump and the rage. That's all the Valks require. They're taking a lot of damage, but Valks can take some punishment, especially under rage. They tend to get that town hall taken out. Notice how the jump doesn't connect anything besides the town hall. I tried to keep it away from this compartment because I wanted the town hall going down first. Uh, the queen actually goes down here, so only got 52%. I would have liked more, but I'll take a fresh uh, two star. That was a fresh hit, so didn't know where anything was. Got the job done. Uh, moving on to 16, our 10v10. Um, taking a look at this base, Black Ice, just uh, working with what he's given. One thing to always look for at Town Hall 10, especially in these La Luna attacks, is the CC radius. Um, because if it does not adequately cover an Inferno Tower air defense combo, that is your cue to wall breaker your queen in and charge this Inferno um, air defense combination. 
The CC is a very powerful tool at Town Hall 10 for shutting down the queen, but when it is offset, you want to use your queen to get in there and get some value because she is very strong inside the base. Now, granted, the space is not maxed out. It is um, somewhat far from it. It has the archer towers, um, but the wizard towers, the expos, the infernos, uh, not maxed out. So that does make a difference. Anyway, though, um, the king is a good way to clear the funnel. And also, if you drop some wizards behind him, you can get some value in terms of the wizards. Using him as a tank to get some value Baby dragons are a good way to both funnel and tank your queen. A giant works as well. You want to make sure the queen's taken care of. Don't make it too close because it's so important you get the inferno and the air defense, especially if there's unforeseen ground skellies, which is rare, but sometimes it is if they're uh, expecting that. But the main thing, check that CC radius. Doesn't even um, become a thing until the queen's already done her job. Make sure you bring that archer, which Black Ice did. The one archer he has is to draw the hound away from the action, so that way the pups don't get on it. He'll drop that, I think, in just a moment. Starts with the air part of the attack, and uh, just not freezing. No need to freeze a level 1 Inferno Tower. Good rage. You want to rage over the queen so the skellies get raged up. The skelly spell to take out the defensive queen because she was still up. And also rages over the Inferno, so get some good double value there. Balloon pathing isn't great, to be honest, into the base here. But um, the balloons are just going to overpower this. Has a spare rage. You could have argued he should have brought a heal. But um, with no splash damage, the rage is almost better. The heal is good for back-end wizard towers and stuff like that. But there were none on this attack, it looks like. So uh, good stuff. He does miss the poison for a while on those air skellies. So they get a few balloons taken out. But he already has the minions and all that other stuff for cleanup. So um, this base is toast. Nice attack to Black Ice. Um, we're going to take a look at two 9v9s. Not the longest video, I know, but um, that's just how it works sometimes. Um, first one being number uh, 20. Yes, number 20. Okay, Mr. Yazbek. Um, on this base, let me put it this way. For a... Let me go to the replay. For a stoned hobo attack... You want to find a way that your troops will path in with small compartments, but they're, they're going in a way that everything is reachable. So you don't want them to spread out. You want there to be a clear path for them through the base. But at the same time, you want that clear path to let the bowlers and the queen especially reach almost all the point defense and possibly splash damage, but mostly point defense. So let's see what I mean by that. Uh, drops a golem and a balloon. Very nice combo there. One for one trade on the archer tower, which is rare nowadays with the uh, balloon nerf, but uh, works out perfectly here with the golem tanking. So look for those more. They're underutilized. Out come the CC, but a good poison there on all those archers and stuff. Wizards creating the funnel as usual, but check it out. The double jump is taking the troops through a very narrow section of the base. The compartments are small, and that's what you want. You don't want them to meander all around because then your troops get all spread out and stuff gets taken out. The bowlers get exposed. The queen gets exposed. They start going down. You want them compact and getting the value of the spells, getting the value of the golems tanking. Um, you want all that stuff. However, there's not defenses like where that, um, the mortar's not even a defense at this point. It's pretty weak. There's not defenses around here that are not going to be reachable. Everything is pretty much reachable from this push. And that's what you want to look for, a path that is both compact for your troops to take, but also reachable in terms of you can reach stuff and get it taken out, because that's um, very important. That one archer tower drops a few hogs on it. Go all the way back to my, uh, I think it's a stoned hobo attack strategy is what it's called, but it talks about the keys of deploying your hogs to protect your kill squad. Um, details like that for hog deployment that go more in depth than this video. Um, but anyway, the key for this one, I think the main take home is the pathing of the kill squad. The two criteria, the, um, the tight compartment pathing for the kill squad and the accessibility of so many critical defenses, the expos especially. Once again, check out my, I think it's called Stoned Hobo, something like that video um, to give you guys more information. <clears throat> Losing my voice a little bit, but let's move on to the last attack here. Wait for Yazbek to clean up. I don't even know why I do this. I just my ADHD is making me show the end of the attack. 
or my OCD, not my AD. <laughs> oh, sorry. OCD is making me show the end of the attack. Um, 26 is the last one. Um, Tom, not going to say the last name. Um, taking out the space here. And this one was good for a few reasons. The first is the balloon pathing. And for balloons, you want kind of a U shape around the base. You don't want a big block of defenses. Balloons don't do good against blocks. They do good against runways. Same with hogs. And by runway, I mean like a strip. Even if it goes in a curve, just a nice progression around the base that your troops can follow. A nice clockwise or counterclockwise deployment. Um, sorry for all these shameless plugs, but I do have a video. If you go back and check out my... Uh, what is it? Is it my how to use the haste spell video? No, that's a different video. It's how to deploy balloons called something like that. Basically, it talks about how you want to deploy de uh, balloons and how you want to keep the main group up and support them with uh, subsequent other groups of balloons. But the main thing he's doing here, which is nice, is going in this clockwise uh, motion around the base. He did a good job taking out just what he needed, nothing more with the kill squad using those haste spells early. Um, I like the rage here instead of the haste because there's the expo, high HP, there's a sweeper, and it's nice having the bigger spell because it can reach the uh, air defense and the sweeper and propel them out of it. So he gets the value of the two spell space. And then, of course, that back end heal. Whenever there's two wizard towers, you can guess there's gonna also be red air bombs, even Teslas, but regardless, that splash damage is enough to make the heal necessary. Uh, so has that heal, there's so much DPS in that area, but the balloons don't even feel it because they're under the heal, which is so powerful right now at Town Hall 9 for helping your balloon stay up without the Inferno Tower to be in the way. So um, I think that'll do it for this video. Thanks for watching. Hope it helped. Um, if for some weird reason you're not subscribed, hit the subscribe button. And I think that's pretty much it. I'll be covering probably a little bit of Builder Hall. Um, I know some of you guys have mixed reactions to it, but I'll be covering that um, over the next few weeks probably, as well as the usual stuff. So I'll try to keep the town halls balanced. Let me know what you think in the comments, anything you want me to know. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next video, hopefully when I uh, won the state title in doubles. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys later. Bye. Sectatron out.